<laughs> okay. Um, so growing up, um, something that my dad always told me was, Linz, you have to teach people how to treat you. Um, it's kind of like the PG version of do no harm, but take no shit. Um, but I didn't really know how to employ this doctrine into practice um, because by nature, I'm a very easygoing, happy, and most certainly non-confrontational person. Um, if someone did something to me that I didn't really like, um, I might be upset about it for maybe a day or two, but usually sweep it under the rug. Um, or if it happened enough times, I would just stop talking to them altogether. Um, but you can't really do this when you're in a relationship. <laughs> so I met my most recent ex, Michael, at a nightclub because, you know, all great love stories begin at a nightclub. <laughs> um, and he comes up to me and it's really sweaty and also loud, basically pitch black except for the glow of our drink cups. And he's trying to talk to me about school and what my major is, but because it's so loud, his face is basically pressed against my ear just so I can hear what he's saying. Um, and we talk for a little bit, and then a little bit later he asks, do you wanna make out? And I'm like, is this a club thing? I've never, I've never been to one of these before. I just turned 21 the month before. Um, and you know, that line didn't work. <laughs> I kind of just sidestepped a little bit and <laughs> was like, we just met. Um, so no, that's a no for me. Um, <laughs> Um, but usually when I come across guys like Michael who are into me, but I'm not so sure how I feel about them, um, my brain does this thing where it tries to outsmart my gut feeling. Um, you know, my brother in Christ just asked me out. Um, the least I could do is owe him this. Um, maybe it won't be as bad as I think, um, but that's never true. <laughs> um, so... But with Michael, it was even if I wanted to follow my gut, Michael made this really hard for me. Um, his chronic insecurity forced him to project onto me, um, diminishing my confidence, which is already on thin ice as it is. Um, and it's one thing to have insecurities, we all have them, but it's another to be insecure in the relationship itself. Um, so over time, things started to build up, like when Michael and I would disagree on something, like. Can exes be friends? Um, Michael said no, and I disagreed, and things would just be tense between us for the rest of the day. Um, other times when I would go home for the weekend and come back to the city, he would text me, hey, glad you're back safe, um, before I told him where I was, um, <laughs> revealing that he was tracking my location. <laughs> um, and one of the craziest things was that Michael, as a health science major with a public health minor, guilted me into going to his graduation ceremony when I was positive with COVID and was still experiencing symptoms. Um, and one time when I voiced my opinion about something, I said, hey, I'm studying abroad soon and I really need to save money. Um, so what does Michael do? He takes me to Mashaloo, um, which if you don't know, it's one of the most expensive restaurants in all of Philadelphia, and it's literally on a boat, so you're just paying for the ambiance. Um, knowing fully well that I would feel too guilty making him pay for the whole meal, even though it was his idea, because he's on a part-time medical scribe salary. Um, but, but my moment of clarity was when I invited Michael over to watch a movie at my apartment and we wanted to watch I, Tanya, um, which if you don't know, it's about Tanya Harding um, being a previous Olympic figure skater um, who was caught in this national scandal um, because her, her competitor, Nancy Kerrigan, was beat, which was all organized by her boyfriend and his dumb friend. And as we're watching the movie and we're sitting on my bed and my laptop's propped between us, um, I have this realization that, that actually pisses me off. Um, I just realized from this that, am, am I Tanya? Is he going to Jeff Galilee my life right in front of my eyes? I can't let that happen. So I can't let this retrospectively jealous, self-victimizing, possessive, obsessive mama's boy hold a grip on my life any longer. So after not one, but two failed breakup attempts, <laughs> I finally sit him down in the Starbucks on Walnut and 34th. <laughs> and 
just a week before my 22nd birthday, and I finally get him to listen to my side of the story, that I'm unhappy, I have too much on my plate, and I could never live up to the ideal girlfriend mold that he had in his head about me. I'm just a flawed human being, and, and you can take me for what I am or leave me. Um, so I'm, I'm grateful through this entire experience that I learned not only how to teach others how to treat me, but how to treat myself as yeah. well. <laughs>